I'm Jay Fidel, and this is my commentary. Trump's declaration of an emergency puts us in a constitutional crisis. Under the Constitution, Congress does the spending. Congress already refused to appropriate money for his wall. Trump is ignoring Congress, going around Congress, and thus the Constitution. We should not worry that the precedent he is trying to set by this phony emergency will allow the Democrats to do the same thing later. We should rather worry that if Trump gets away with it, he will do it again and again, phony emergencies on everything, allowing him to dictate the laws and the government. With the indefensible and continuing help of Mitch McConnell, Trump has already marginalized the government by compromising the Republican Party and the Senate by appointing and immediately confirming hundreds of right-wing judges in the federal courts, by failing to make appointments and appointing unqualified leaders to federal agencies, and by undermining the intelligence agencies in our country. This dangerous crossroads is hauntingly reminiscent of the Enabling Act of 1933 in Germany, when Hitler ended the Reichstag by having them pass a bill to allow him to make all the laws. The rest is history. If the courts, and especially the Supreme Court, permit Trump to declare a national emergency without there being an emergency, and Congress does not stop him, Congress will again have abdicated. The balance of power among the branches of government designed by the founders will be corrupted, and democracy as we have known it will be upended in favor of this boorish pretender. Putin must be dancing. His efforts to manipulate public opinion and our elections by active measures and disinformation are working very well. Trump has been helping him by fomenting irreconcilable, hostile conflicts on politics, race, religion, healthcare, climate change, international trade, environment, education, taxes, abortion, gun control, special programs and infrastructure, and more. And in undermining NATO, and our critical diplomatic relations with long-standing allies. Putin must be ecstatic to see Trump, his fawning follower, throw our sacred constitution to the wolves. Putin seems to own Trump. Lord and Mueller know what Putin has on him, but it must be big. For us, a continuation of Trump's machinations can lead only to a national breakdown and ultimately political and economic domination by Russia and or China or for that matter, global war. Sadly, we may already have passed the point of no return. See how much time we waste on Trump and his daily distractions, and how little time we have left to think together and save ourselves from what he is doing. As a country, we seem more and more unfocused and unable to deal with him. This makes him all the more powerful. What's the solution? What can we individually and collectively do? Well. We shouldn't fall into the web of divisiveness. We shouldn't be complacent about his lies and distortions of the truth and his ruthless attacks on the media and those who criticize him. Above all, we should not take the bait and fight among ourselves. We cannot let Trump divide us. The Democrats can't afford fragmentation on non-critical issues. We need to focus. We should come together to get Trump out of office. We should form and support a national alliance to choose and elect someone else who can resist his provocations and repair the wreckage of his unhinged administration. I'm glad Hawaii joined the suit to stop Trump's declaration of emergency, just as I was glad that Hawaii joined the suit to stop his travel ban. Hawaii needs to be a leader, morally, socially, and politically, here and in Washington and across the country. We should be part of this national effort. We should make our views known across the country and the world. We should connect the dots on Trump. We should point out the error of his ways and the damage of his actions. We should resist anything as would enable him to continue his efforts to achieve unrestrained power. If that means writing or disseminating op-ed pieces, then so be it. If that means contributing to candidates in other states, then so be it. If that means talking with or going to the mainland to participate in their campaigns, then so be it. We are here with the advantage of distance and diversity, and we need to contribute to the national conversation and show Congress, and particularly the Senate, how much we the people around the country care 
and how much we, the people, want our elected officials to do their sworn duty to uphold the law. Ben Franklin said we can only have a republic if we're willing to keep it. Right now, this republic is in greater jeopardy than it has ever been. If we don't act together to restore constitutional government in Washington, we will all be very sorry. To keep the republic, we must all pay the price, just as they did in 1789. Freedom doesn't come free. The price is eternal vigilance against the terrible, villainous tomfoolery we are now seeing under Donald Trump. Time to stand up. What were you doing when the country came apart, Daddy? I hope you can give your kids a good answer.